My guest today is Dustin Campbell. Dustin, how are you? I'm doing good, David. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I miss going out to conferences, going to Redmond, seeing good people like yourself. <laughs> uh, but I'm holding up. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's kind of a bummer year for that. I think we'd be at Codemash right now, right? We'd be at least packing up and getting ready for Codemash. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the since you're an Ohio guy. You, yeah. you always go to coach and congratulations on your local college sports team uh, <laughs> success last weekend. I, I haven't been to code Mash in actually quite a while. It's, it became a, a more challenging to get out there in the, with, uh, you know, family and holidays and things. So I, you know, the, 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 and also, um, yeah, because when you travel out to code Mash, your family expects yeah, you to bring everybody to stop, and, stop uh, week there. And we have three sets of parents to go travel around between Chicago and Dayton and Findlay, Ohio, and and it just became kind of a nightmare. And uh, and also that made us travel in the holidays, which we just don't want to do. Right. So uh, so I, yeah, I haven't done it in a long while. I haven't done Code Mash in quite a while. That's the, reason, that's the reason I haven't seen you in a long time. What yeah, I right think on? so. What, what uh, I I work on a lot of things. So I'm a uh, um I'm I'm an architect in the .NET tooling space these days. Um, I still work on the C sharp language design team. Um, uh, you know, I work on all sorts of things related to .NET tooling and especially .NET Core tooling, um, as that's kind of been you know our primary focus uh, as of late. And I've been fascinated by um, in the last couple of years trying to make legacy tooling in Visual Studio. So things like um, the resource editor or the data sources window or the WinForms designer, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. work and support dot, their kind of .NET Core, right? We, we support a lot of these things now in .NET Core. With .NET Core 3, uh, we added you know, support for WinForms and WPF, kind of Windows desktop applications. And, um, but as you well know, um, with WinForms, it's really important that you have a designer. Like it's 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 kind of the opposite of WPF, where WPF it's like you know what we've got a great declarative language in XAML. A lot of people just write the XAML wrong. They use the designer as kind of a kind of a preview, and 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 so you're you're probably okay. But with with WinForms, I mean, really it's dependent. All, it's on all the drag and drop. That's the way. It's it, all that, drag uh, and drop. That, that whole culture evolved because of that. Yeah, yeah, and it, because it wanted to look like the old VB6 thing. That's the that's the crowd Microsoft exactly. successfully attracted. Exactly, and so that's 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 really important to the user experience. And so, so we ported it over to .NET Core three, and then we've been slowly bringing the WinForms designer online. It's there today, um, and uh, but I've been working on kind of making that go um, for a little while, and uh, it's it's been it's been tricky. It's been fun. It's you know it sounds it sounds simple, right? I mean, it's a designer. It's well, been around for a long time. You've got this other designer. What's what is it that makes it hard? Well, designers themselves are kind of hard. They're <laughs> kind of interesting okay. because, yeah. well, it's, I, 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 mean, I don't need to trivialize it. It's just something it's, that I no, don't it, have to think about, and so I don't. I know, and, and, and it wasn't until I dove into it that I, I realized, okay, this is actually, this kind of interesting problem is the way designers, the way designers work is kind of, is kind of an interesting problem. Um, and, you know, they say there's only two, you know, things that are still interesting and fun, like in computer science, right? There's like operating systems and compilers. I would argue that designers are also super interesting. Um, because what you're doing, you want to you want to design this user's application. You want to give them a surface on which they can, you know, it looks like their application. They can drag buttons around and do all that stuff, but you haven't compiled your application yet, right? And so w the WinForce designer and and the WPF designer, they have to, you know, create those objects. They have to create the form. They have to create the buttons. They have to do all that all that sort of thing. Actually, has to be created and and live and in in some space, right? Um, but even you have during the design time is it during the design time, but even before you've built, right? So you might, add, you know, create a WinForms application. You've got form one and, and, um, but you haven't built it yet, but somehow you're designing form one and it hasn't been compiled. And the way we do that, um, is we, we look at the, uh, at least in WinForms, the way we do this is, uh, we, we, we construct a form, we construct 
you know, uh, an, an actual live object form uh, through a super complicated process of looking at the base type of the thing. We say, oh, this is public class form one. Uh, colon form. Okay, we're going to create a form then. We're just going to create the base type. And then uh, if you've ever poked around in a, in a WinForms application and looked at what the designer does, it generates this big initialized component method, mm -hmm. right? Basically, the you know, the designer uses that as, as, as if you think of it like, okay, you know, if I just create the base type of my form and then I use that initialized component method, that initialized component method is all the deltas for setting up my form. Uh, it's supposed to contain everything that puts the buttons where they go, creates everything and puts them in the right places. So if I just have that initialized component method, I can then take that and turn it into a real living form that looks exactly like form one without it having been compiled yet. Hmm. And so okay. that's that's kind of how it works. There's a whole thing. Um, this is all uh, when I when I started working on this, it was kind of a, a walk down memory lane of all the technologies I never looked at. Um, code Dom. Uh, serialization and deserialization because and what that does is it takes and looks at okay what's that source code in the initialized component method okay I'm gonna there's a process uh, of deserialization where we take that code or serialization excuse me uh, I can't remember deserialization where we take that code that's actually in there the code in the editor and we turn that into a, a code DOM model if you remember mm -hmm. code DOM with all you know you could kind of model types and methods yeah the and, hierarchy of uh, containership yeah, and it was kind of a, a, a it was, the way they did it was they did kind of a lowest common denominator approach on the languages we supported. So like we support VB and C Sharp. Those are two primary languages that built code DOM providers um, at the time. And so it's it allows for statements that are you know common across C Sharp, common across VB. Um, and so we take that, uh, uh, we produce a code DOM model. And then from that code DOM model, we run it through the code DOM another code DOM deserialization. So we go from source to code DOM, and then we go from that code DOM model of objects that kind of describes what's in that in the, that form and that initialized component method and the various fields for like your buttons and stuff that you added. And we take that model and then we deserialize it again through another code DOM deserialization process that takes that and turns it into real objects. So it basically says, okay, I've got a form. Well, let me go and resolve that name form to system.windows.forms.form. Okay, now I can take that and I can use reflection and I can create a form. Okay, now let's start walking through all the statements in that initialized component method. Okay, well, here's something that creates a button. Okay, well, we'll resolve the name of the button to the type button and create it and add it to the form. And it does all this, just kind of magically creates these classes and puts fields on them and does all this stuff. It's, it's kind of a, it's fascinating. How it, how, it, how it works, and I, I never really pay attention to it all. Um, it wasn't something I trafficked in, uh, but now um, you know I'm kind of kind of fascinated by it. And and the, this, but because when you're when you're what you're designing is something that we kind of faked up to look like your code mm -hmm. that you haven't compiled yet, like like Roslyn does. Yeah, and so then but then and then when you manipulate it. When you like add a button to it, now we're manipulating the real objects that we've created behind the scenes. So there's really underneath in, in Visual Studio with the WinForce designer today, there's a, we'll call the sneeze guard. There's a transparent window okay. over it. And what we, what, like what's underneath, it's not like we're, it's not like we're doing some custom painted thing. No, it's just a real form there that we, we, that's uh, parented inside of Visual Studio uh, under uh, beneath this transparent sneeze guard, so you can't click on it. We capture all the clicks for that and make that do drag and drop and move things around and stuff. But like you're, you've just basically got kind of a facsimile of your application underneath there, and we just poke at it uh, when you when you click with the mouse. It's kind of it's fascinating. So, so. so that, that's the way that the old Visual Studio worked with that was just WinForms, and mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't necessarily work that way yet. In the current well, version of Visual Studio, is that right? And you're, 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 that what you're trying to change? No. Uh, well, so Visual Studio, uh, there's there's this problem where it's kind of inherent in what we were just talking about, where where the WinForms designer being, if it's a collection of WinForms objects, if it's a you know a form, a button, all that kind of thing. I mean, so, I mean, we need to create those, um, and they're going to be created in whatever .NET you happen to be running on, right? right. But Visual Studio runs on .NET Framework. Right, and so if we want to support .NET Core, I need to be creating .NET Core forms and .NET Core buttons because that's what your code is actually modeling. And what I mean, and it, it's important because you know if we add APIs and new properties to buttons and things like that in .NET Core, 
you know, if, if we just create them as .NET framework objects, well, they wouldn't work. Mm, right. If we had some, suppose like on tree view, we had like a, you know, you know, a bold property on tr tree node, you know, it wouldn't show up because it would be on .NET framework unless we went and added it to .NET framework or something. Right. So it's, uh, so it needs to, the thing you're designing, those objects, uh, um, that design time need to be running on the .NET that you're targeting. So the interesting thing that we've been doing, and the, the why part of what makes this very what's what's been this interesting problem is trying to make it so that that part of the designer all runs out of process, um, and and then we uh, <laughs> we we do some sly dirty tricks, and uh, we take that that form that gets created um, in the other process, the .NET Core form, and because it's this is just Windows. It's all Win32. They're all H wins under the hood, and we can parent that that form uh, that's created over there, the designer itself. We can parent it back into Visual Studio as just an H wind, not even caring that they happen to be running on .NET and under the hood, they're still just Windows. And so, and we can and you can parent Windows cross process if you know what you're doing. It's actually really tricky to get that right um, because. Uh, anybody who's ever tried to do, not many people try to do this because it, it leads to insanity, but if you try and have uh, an application where you have Windows, uh, just a WinForms app or Win32 app of any kind, and you try and have those created on where you have two th different threads where different windows are created on, mm -hmm. things get wacky because mm -hmm. Windows will try to... And if you, especially if you have parent-child relationships, it gets wacky. But Windows will, if if you're, you can very quickly get into into deadlock issues, uh, where you know this one, if this one receives focus, and you know if a window created in this thread has loses focus because the window in this thread created focus, and you know Windows, it's this one is waiting on this one, and Windows will try and send a message to say, hey, I've killed your focus, and then it just deadlocks, right? Because Windows mm -hmm. is sending messages in a blocking way across threads, and then that's worse across process. Um, and it's in kind of implicitly the world you're in. So that's been an interesting problem in itself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's been fun and, and 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 cool, just kind of being because also because a lot of these APIs um, back in the .NET 1.0 days are very synchronous in nature. The WinForms Designer, its APIs are very very synchronous. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, but now we're moving across process and figuring out how to do some of these things in asynchronous ways. Um, mm -hmm. So as we separate across the process boundary, that's one problem. And then later, um, there may come a world where we separate across a network boundary. Maybe you're you're designing your application, but you know if we're in a world where of of, of GitHub code spaces or something like that, imagine this future where you don't even have your development environment on your machine, maybe, right? Right. Well, then you know that because those objects need to run on .NET, well. You might not even have that .NET Core SDK on your machine. Uh, that might be on some, you know, other machine, some VM that you're working with or something. We need to be able to, to make that work now across a network boundary as well. And so, trying to build in asynchrony and uh, into something that was implicitly synchronous always um, is also an interesting problem. So. Yeah. Is it is it also a challenge if you're dealing with uh, cross-platform issues? In other words, if it will this. Can you could you create a WinForms application on Visual Studio on a Mac? No, no. That's okay. what, what, that we, well, potentially yes, but it would be for targeting Windows, um, okay. right? So, so one of the things we 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 you know it's it would be a problem of of uh, yeah. If if you were in a world where Visual Studio on a Mac was just a window into literally like if you think of it as a window into a, a, a very thin client into the entire Visual Studio system that's kind of like somewhere else. Um, and you had things, because there would be things you'd expect to be there, like you'd want to be able to F5. Well, you wouldn't be able to do that on the local machine because this is a WinForms app or you know whatever. So you'd want to be able to, okay, well, now I'm, I'm remotely debugging this thing and, and that kind of thing. If we can set that up, then yeah, I mean, you could imagine that. Um, okay. Yeah, I I think it's on. I think it's less likely that folks on a Mac will be developing for Windows, but uh, right. Windows desktop apps. But um, but still, it's even even Windows to Windows, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm on a. I work on a Windows machine, and I can't remember the last time I built or even maintained a Windows Forms app. It's been years. Yeah. So uh, so so I don't even know the answer to this question. Uh, how far along on this process are you? Is this done, or is this a work in process? What are you doing? It's 
It's available. Um, it's it works in Visual Studio today. Um, there are things that we're working on that go kind of along with this. Um, that are you know that are part of the WinForms family of things. Uh, the uh, the data sources window is one that's 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 a challenge to get up and running uh, right now because again, you know, all this legacy tooling. I want to say legacy, but it's it's not really. I mean, it's, we could call it classic tooling or you know, but it's <laughs> it's .NET framework tooling. You know, but I want to say .NET Framework tooling from like the .NET 1.0 time frame. Right. This tooling, we committed a lot of sins. We we built a lot of really cool things in .NET 1.0 that um, we now need that we used all over the place that we now need to kind of repent for. Um, so like the data sources window, it, what it loves to do is it loves to like, oh, I'm just going to grovel the the assemblies. I'm going to load them up from your project. I'm going to reflect over everything. I'm going to use Activator Create Instance to create instances of those objects and you know then reflect over their properties and it's like well again it's a similar problem to the WinForms designer if it's a if you're on if your project is targeting .NET Core and you're creating those objects they might not be right for your application you like imagine this is entity framework which entity framework are we building are we actually mm -hmm. when we activate or create instance is it actually using like who knows um, and so that's an example of another thing that we're not at yet we don't have done but we want to make that we need to make that also run out of process to whatever framework that you happen to be targeting, whether it's .NET Core, and in the future, probably for .NET Framework projects as well. Just always run it out of process, um, so that we can we can, you know, uh, 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 kind of get away from having everything kind of built in this monolithic Visual Studio sort of yeah. thing. We're going to make it a little bit more modular. Um, but yeah, those sorts of that, that sort of tooling is a problem. So uh, so data binding right now is kind of kind of not really working. Um, I mean, data binding can work, but setting it up with the data sources window and the data connection wizard and those kinds of things don't work yet. Um, we have mostly our controls, uh, the base WinForms controls, working and that sort of thing. And uh, a big piece of, uh, of what's being done right now is kind of working with third parties, because uh, the third party control market again, this is part of WinForms as well, is that it's just it's just this vast, rich set of controls out there among uh, the different the different vendors that have made some of the coolest stuff, right. um, and making sure that that stuff works is hard. Um, you yeah. know, we've had to put some 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 concerns around um, around this. Or, for example, uh, we've had to make breaking changes in kind of the the designer APIs that they would use. Um, and there's just some some significant breaking changes that they right. they have to deal with, and we're trying to trying to minimize it as much as possible, but it's difficult. Uh, there are some sure. things that are just like I think I think you I don't came know what from the uh, from one of the control vendors before you joined Microsoft years ago. I did, I did. I, I came from Dev Express years ago, uh, working on uh, um, Code Rush. That's been well, it's been it's been I think I'm in my 14th year at Microsoft though, so that's been a while. Congratulations. Uh, uh, but uh, no, the so like. I'll give you an example of one of the problems that, that is very difficult is that, you know, when you click in the property grid in Visual Studio and it brings up a, a modal dialogue for something and you want to edit, you know, to edit some properties in a more rich way, right. that dialogue needs to originate, that needs to, that dialogue itself needs to live in Visual Studio running on .NET Framework within Visual Studio because it's, it's, it's part of the client. It's a modal dialogue that's running inside of the modal dialogue loop in Visual Studio, right? It's pushing a modal loop inside of, the, all the Windows machinery that's in VS, um, making a modal dialog pop up and then sort of sticking it in the modal dialog loop in another from another process is um, is is fraught with deadlocks and challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't want to do that. So, but a lot of but a lot of this stuff it was kind of all in one where you would you know the designers would um, for for a control if it had like a really rich client dialogue, you know, designer dialogue that would pop up, they, those would all live in the same process. Well, now they have to be split. And uh, that's an example of something that's like, well, it kind of needs to be rewritten. Um, and it's, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a particular challenge because um, I, I, I went and rewrote all of ours for WinForms. So, for example, if you drop a tree view control on WinForms and you bring up, there's a nodes editor dialogue that you can bring up and you can add nodes to the tree view and, you know, set their properties and that sort of thing. The, that dialogue needs to live in Visual Studio, but all of the logic that manipulates the designer needs to live over in the other process. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a whole um, new API for separating kind of a view from a from a from sort of a you know your ui logic sure and but and the, the biggest good practice yeah i mean the, you know the practice but it's it's for a reason right because the actual ui logic is going to live 
<laughs> somewhere else completely, right. and we're going to call it, you know, over a, a, a data pipe. We're going to ping it and, and call it call it cross process. The uh, the trick with that um, is though that uh, the, the, the the real trick when I was working on it, and I did a lot of our dialogues was actually teasing out the UI logic. It was like a massive refactoring because huh. WinForms is very much designer based and it's very, you know, so the UI logic in all of these dialogues, and I swear, you know, this is Microsoft and we did not do the right thing when we designed this, you know, these dialogues, we, we double click those event handlers and we put all our we UI logic. Thousands of lines of code. Thousands of lines button of code. One underscore click method. <laughs> exactly. And all of that had to be teased apart and refactored yeah. so that it was separate and, uh, and we could do that. And that is actually one of the, probably the biggest challenges right now for everyone that's moving over to the new designers that well you need to separate your dialogues so that they can live in this world i mean another reason is for the dialogue thing is that um i, I was mentioning it's, it's difficult or scary terrifies me it makes me not lose sleep at night to think about you know popping a modal dialogue in an application over here and rehosting it as the modal dialogue in this application over here that's scary enough but eventually if these run on different machines, there's no way to do that, okay. right? So you can't pop the dialogue in this machine and suddenly just kind of make it work over here. It, no, it's it's over there, and and you might not even wind up with. Then you start getting into problems of like, well, the you know, different high DPI issues between these machines and all oh, the, you know, get all sorts of crazy things, theming so, problems. So it just looks, it just it just renders just, differently. Well, who knows what it does? Yeah. So right. so that's a that's a. So, so what we've kind of taken a stance that any client UI that you build for the designer kind of that accompanies it, like any dialogues, things like that, those have to live in Visual Studio and communicate with the other process, communicate with the designer and the other process. Um, so, so that's that's been the biggest challenge I think from a third-party API perspective. Most of it we've gotten to work, um, yeah. but uh, you know, kind of just work. But that's that's been the hard part. I think that's good. I think this is uh, one of the shifts in the last 14 years that Microsoft has had is that you know, 20 years ago, I think the, or at least my perception from the outside was that Microsoft would just say, okay, this is the new stuff. Start using the new stuff. And as far as the legacy thing was concerned, tough. You want to yeah. use our tooling upgrade. And uh, and now you're going through a lot of hoops to make sure that WinForms, WinForms uh, has, it was, uh, I'll, I'll put finger quotes around the word, deprecated <laughs> a long time yeah. ago. But but talking to the vendors, the, the, these these control vendors, they tell me that they sell way more WinForms controls than they do .NET controls. That it's, there's, because there's a huge user base out there of developers that are developing WinForms and maintaining WinForms. It's true. I, 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 and I think it's, 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 there's a, and there's a number of reasons for that. I, I'm, I'm sure you've you've probably got your 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 thinking here, kind of your gut feelings on this too uh, as well. But I mean, it's a matter of skill sets. I mean, those yeah. of us that started were learning .NET 1.0 back in 1.0 or 1.1 days. I mean, this is how you build things, and right. this was how you built things until .NET 3, right. .NET Framework 3, until like 2006, 2007 when we first released, you know, that stuff. It was it was it was it was like good eight years of singular desktop UI framework. Right, it's a similar problem for ASP.NET. Right, there's still a lot of web forms out there because right. there is. I mean, and so, so, so you have problems of of, of people just having that skill set. You have problems of it just being, you know, that you've got the projects written. There's lots of legacy code out there. Yeah, I think with to. WinForms, there's also a problem of the simplicity and ease at which it works. It's actually really comfortable, convenient, and it works really well. And right. so, if I'm about to slap together an application, that's like a simple little tool. I will often bring up just uh, I'm just going to create a WinForms app. This is just too easy to do. And I want to I want to get my job done right now, and I'm not I'm not you know making some big production thing. And if I did want to make some production big production thing, I can go to one of the control vendors and get you know controls that make it look like the latest and greatest Office that make the UI you know uh, you know modern. I can go right. do that and and be done. And so there's a ton of stuff. Um, there's a, there's a, just a ton of WinForms apps out there. Um, yeah, I think I think it was one of the problems with uh, the that you know kind of a damn if you do, damn if you don't. I think WPF back in the day and XAML in itself it pushed the industry forward into this really beautiful declarative thing. And it was just this, it's it's amazing. Um, when I got to Microsoft, the dirty secret was that nobody knew how to write XAML code except for the XAML guys. Um, <laughs> and I remember taking a weekend. I didn't know. And and very few people knew on on the C sharp team and the VB team. And I remember I took I took a I took a weekend and I delved into Adam Nathan's book and I just 
you know, poured myself into doing WPF and learning XAML and uh, it, you know, actually several weekends. I don't want to, <laughs> it was, there's a lot. I, I've always said you kind of need this to really get at it. You need this PhD in XAML. Um, and, there's, <laughs> uh, and I was, cons- I mean, it took a lot of, a lot of, a lot of time, but it was so vastly different and right. not exactly straightforward. Right. If you get into like, oh, WPF and data triggers and, you know, all this stuff that you can do in there, just super rich, beautiful things, animations and all that sort of thing. Um, it wasn't as straightforward as, OK, button here. Oh, yeah, it's got padding, you know, and yeah. uh, and it is anchored this way. Like all that kind of made sense. Right. It was like, yeah. That, and so for, to just kind of a, a basic, logically minded person, that makes sense. And, and, and XAML was kind of a little bit more of a of a mind flip. Um, and so a lot of people didn't yeah. make that mind. So a lot I, of people I did, did it until it, I joined I Microsoft. I when yeah. I joined Microsoft, I was forced to because there was that big push to build mobile applications, to build Windows 8 applications. That was a huge focus on the, the DX team that I joined. So I was forced uh, yeah. to learn it really quickly, even though I hadn't touched it prior to that. Yeah, and another challenge with XAML has always been also the uh, the different flavors of XAML, right? Um, and so I'm targeting you were you know whether you were um, targeting Xamarin or you're targeting you know WPF or then UWP and when you are like all these different kind of XAML right. flavors where sort of the basics are there, but if you really get into the edges of it, it's like mm, I'm missing a lot of things, <laughs> um, right. or yeah, you know, and you can run into a lot of surprises. So. Yeah, the other thing is that we 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 yeah, we like to build new UI frameworks. It seems. I mean, I've been at Microsoft now, and I think, gosh, uh, since I've been here, I feel like we're in like five or like like four or five on on just on .NET alone. Um, and, but, the thing that's always been there and has always worked and is delivered as part of Windows itself has always been WinForms. So it's kind of always this been the like even even then it's been the fallback thing. So it's an important technology. A lot of people yeah. use it. There's a lot of applications out there. Um and so we gotta have a designer for it. So that's that's kind of yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Very cool. We're just about at time. Is there anything oh, sorry. we haven't talked about that we should? Um I don't know. Um what do what are you what do you what would you like to talk about? What are you doing? <laughs> I haven't talked I to you in that. forever. <laughs> we'll talk offline about what I'm doing, but I uh, mostly I'm I just joined a team that's doing um, media and communications, so I'm okay. doing a lot of streaming video. I'm about to ramp up on that. Okay. <laughs> that's my new job. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, um, but in the meantime, Dustin, it's been great talking to you. I hope we can get out and get back to Sandusky, Ohio, and Finley, Ohio, and all those great places in the near future and share a beverage. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Nice talking right. with you. Thanks. What I like most about working on technology is that I, I'm doing it for my friends, right? When I work on things like C Sharp Language and .NET and Roslyn or Visual Studio and all these things that I've, even when I worked on C Sharp for Visual Studio Code, um, the sorts of people that I'm working on those products for are people that, I mean, they're like me. And, uh, and in a lot of cases, those are my friends and I really enjoy that.